Welcome everyone. It's so good to see you all here today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm president of all the grandchildren, Gladys's proud firstborn grandson, George Henry Olson IV. I think she would have told everyone that if I got to tell her this joke. Can you believe it? I stand here in front of you all shocked. My world lately has been shaken up. I'm in such denial that this has happened and I'm a little broken. As a critical care nurse, I know death. I felt the last heartbeats and seen the last breaths of many, but I never thought I'd be here right now giving a eulogy about my amazing grandmother Gladys. It's hard to believe for many reasons that she is not here with us today. She was unstoppable. Always on the go, prim, proper, nails done, hair done, ready to go out for some great deals and great food. I've been to literally thousands of stores and restaurants with Nana, and it was always special. She was the giver of all givers. I've never known someone with such a tremendous, selfish, gift-giving ability. I've talked to many of you and have heard countless stories of Gladys's treasures she brought with her from all the way from the faraway land of Massachusetts. I knew she had gifts for many. After all, I was there with her, buying them all throughout the year but I wasn't keeping record. I didn't realize how many gifts she had got until we were at the border and they had them all laid out. A bag and a bag and a box with little gifts that had no price. The border patrol staff knew who she was. This kind old grandmother from Massachusetts who was just trying to get to Prince Edward Island, Canada to see her family with her grandson. But little did they know if they dug just a little deeper and unhinged the spare tire they would find a six-month supply of cigarettes. Oh, Nana, one of the most law-abiding citizens you'd ever meet, but would go to jail for a few smokes if she had to. And again, it was never about the actual gift. After all, what would a 25-year-old man be doing with a curious George coloring book, a Hot Wheels toy car, and a thing of cotton candy bubblegum because when you were 12, you said it was one of your favorite things, but now you can't stand anymore. It truly never mattered. She was blinded by the reward from this altruistic act of giving, and every time she went shopping, she'd be thinking about every single one of you. Whenever she would ask my opinion if someone would like something, it was just to be nice to me, because she was already set in buying the gift. I could see that glimmer in her eye. She was playing in her head the reaction of the person, seeing how happy they would be after getting the gift from her. It was truly out of pure kindness and love. You could say she was addicted to shopping, but again, it wasn't about the gift. She'd be thinking of everyone, all the time, even outside of the stores. Everything she would ever read and found interesting, she would cut it out and write the name and date for the person she wanted to read it to. She would record programs on the VHS or call us and to turn on a certain channel. She just cared. She just sincerely cared about our well-being in any way to help us find joy. She would do the same in return. She was incredibly independent, confident, strong-willed, and honest. She used to gracefully carry heavy banquet trays at the Kern Wooden Hilltop and tell these stories to hundreds of servers we would meet in all of our restaurant adventures. She was so smart and knew the restaurant business, but she would still, and she's gonna kill me for this, slide the little cheat sheet for tip amounts and tell me to make sure no one would see. She loved a good hot meal, nothing too fancy and gourmet, just the basics, but hot. And her coffee, boiling black with a little cream, I think all the grandchildren knew how to order a coffee for Nana. I think they also have all been to the eagle's nest with her for a lobster roll. She was so proud of all of her grandchildren and now great-grandchildren, it's hard to believe. She loved making memories with them and cherishing those memories in Wakefield and Nine Mile Creek. She would make doubles. She had such a respect for time and dates. She made it clear that she loved being a grandmother but hated aging. She would look at her skin and be perplexed because she felt like she was 25. <laughs> I'd call Nana sometimes at one in the morning when I was in college, and people would be like, who are you talking to? Oh, just my grandmother. 
They thought she was the coolest, but they didn't realize how cool she was until they met her. She really was the coolest. I miss her so much, but I know she is here with us right now. As I move my hands, as I think, as my heart beats, she is with me and she's with all of you. She had a connection with those who have passed and she treasured it. She taught us that even after death, we need to care for those relationships. Just because you've passed, doesn't mean that the impact that they had on you has gone away. I ask you to keep Gladys close to you. Pay attention to your dreams and look for the omens. Be the gift giver she was. Cherish all the memories you create and love unconditionally. Learn from her. I wanted to share a story with you outside of my eulogy and just speak from the heart and share a memory I had with her last year before she had passed. It was getting kind of difficult and, um, and her health was getting the best of her. And it was difficult, to be honest, it was. It just wasn't her. I had visited her and I was ready to go back home to San Francisco and before I left, she begged me to, before I go, to just listen with her, this cassette tape. And she popped it in, pressed play, and as soon as she did, we were both transported back 25 years when I was six years old. And we were talking. And I could see the look on her face and I could see the look on my face. We were both smiling. And no matter how hard life was at that moment, I could see how happy she was and I could truly see how much she loved me. And I could see how much I loved her. She just wanted to go back to that moment. What was mom doing? Where'd she, where she'd make me tea when I'd wake up from sleeping. And we'd talk and we'd listen to radio programs and talk about life. You must have been asleep. You were asleep out in the yard? No. I think you must have been dreaming. To talk about everything. She used to get up late. You really did. I used to get up early. And she'd write notes the night before when she went to bed at two in the morning. (laughs) That was little George on Tuesday, August twenty fifth, nineteen ninety two. He was playing with little Jimmy today. Um Darlene and Mike's son, and he, um, oh, we had a ball with him. And they could tell me this story while we were eating supper. He's the dearest little fella, he's so good. But after looking at all these memories that I will cherish forever, it gives me hope. One day we will get to relive those moments. Papa and George, when I was six years old. Six years old. Say hello, George. Hello.